So for our thermofluids project, we chose to do water hammer suppression. So water hammer describes the pressure changes that are associated with the momentum of water when water is traveling down a pipe and is brought to an instantaneous stop by the closing of a valve. In order to visualize this, picture a train hurtling down a track when it's brought suddenly to a stop by a wall. The energy of the forward momentum has to be dispersed somehow, but it can't simply disappear. We know this by the continuity of energy theory. In our system, the train is like the water, the tracks are our pipes, and the wall is the closing valves. And in our system, the energy dispersal manifests as pressure spikes within the pipes. This is what causes the banging in your pipes when you're running a dishwasher or a washing machine. This can cause lots of problems with the infrastructure and cost companies lots of money. And so it falls upon engineers like us to come up with a solution to those problems. So you're faced with the problem of reducing the pressure spikes or somehow otherwise reducing the amount of effect that has on the infrastructure. One common option is the use of an expansion chamber. That's gonna provide more space for the pressure to have time to reduce. Another option, slowing the rate at which the valve is closing. That close moving from instantaneous to gradual, that's the method they use in dams. As you can see here, the closing of the valve sends a pressure spike down the pipe. Opening it back up creates another spike. These pressure spikes are equal and opposite due to the continuity of energy equations. You can think of this like the water hammer, which is the second spike, is like noise cancelling headphones for the system, cancelling out the initial spike, and thereby mitigating the detrimental effects on the pipe's infrastructure. Here's a slow motion capture of the water hammer experiment. This clearly shows the jolt caused by the pressure spike within the pipe. Now that's all lovely in concept, but in order to demonstrate the water hammer accurately in an experiment environment, a number of problems have to be overcome. In order to do the experiment properly, the pressure spikes can't be too high within the pipes. So that completely ruled out using a manometer. It also meant decreasing the volume of water within the pipes. So for this experiment, we only used a meter and a half of pipe. So we wanted to use a digital system in order to collect the results. Unfortunately, using something like VDAS, it doesn't have a high enough refresh rate. See, the pressure wave's moving at 1,000 meters per second, so the collection of the results, that needs to be almost instantaneous. And to get a transducer that's able to work at that refresh rate, that's really expensive, and we just couldn't justify it on something that we weren't even sure was going to work. What we ended up using was an analog sensor. See, the thing about the analog sensor is that it does away with the refresh rate. No need for digital systems. You use a slow motion camera, get the reading, and that's that. It's easy. So, Dan, what are some of the difficulties we face while undergoing the project? So, one of the first difficulties we had was recording the pressure. Uh, we went for an analog uh, pressure sensor because the water time happened so quickly, the, a digital transducer would have to have a really quick refresh rate. Um, otherwise, it possibly wouldn't have recorded it, and those are really expensive and couldn't justify the outlay. Um, the second difficulty we had was using uh, solenoid valve. Solenoid valves are a mechanical piece of equipment, so this has quite a slow open and close rate in comparison to the water hammer. Uh, one of the third things we had was this pressure sensor, this um, solenoid valve is quite a cheap one we've got off the, off the internet. Um, and it's not made, it, it's not made to the same time. Right, so, right. so what are some improvements you feel you could have made? We would have, for the next instance, we would go for a um, digital press transducer that has a high refresh rate, record pressure upstream and then downstream. And they'll be able to graphically see how opening and closing this solenoid valve decreases the pressure spikes upstream and downstream. We would then have a more expensive, faster reacting solenoid valve so we can have those open and closure rates quicker and then also record more valve delays. Um, so opening and closing this quicker, more time so we can get a more defined graph and see how the relationship is. So it was a success. Um, we proved that we can reduce this water hammer um, using software so therefore it can be implemented quite easily into washing machines, dishwashers and the domestic setting. Okay, thanks Dan.